Hi, I'm Jack Crutchfield, and welcome to Obscurely Famous Graves Presidents 1 through 5. And I'm not going to give you a history of, of stuff that we've all heard before, but rather I thought I would just throw some trivia out there that might show you that these guys were human beings just like all of us are. They're buried in some interesting places, and maybe if you're on vacation, it might be something you might like to do. So let's get started, and we'll start with the Alpha President, George Washington. He's the only president elected unanimously to the office, and he actually did it twice, so he must have been something. His second inaugural address was less than two minutes long, and only had 135 words. The father of our country had no children, but his wife, Martha, had four by her first husband, Daniel Park Custis. They lived at Mount Vernon, and they were buried at Mount Vernon. And as you can see, uh, the original resting place, and then there was an upgrade. Looked a whole lot better. He inherited slaves when he was 11, but he also did something in his will by freeing his slaves in something called manumission. That meant upon his death they were all to be freed, but in reality only one actually went free, and it took decades in that era to get the rest of them free. In the Revolutionary War, he lost more battles than he won. He lost seven, he won six, and four were considered a draw. During his lifetime, he wrote eighteen to 20,000 letters. Now, given he didn't have Instagram and he didn't have Facebook and all that, that's still one a day for 54 years. That's a lot of writing. He owned a whiskey distillery, which would probably make some people upset today, but he did. And those beautiful wooden teeth that you always hear about, which would just have to be horrible, were actually made of ivory. He had one natural tooth left in his head at his inauguration, and he had several pairs of false teeth during his lifetime. George Washington, first president of the United States, buried at Mount Vernon, Virginia. It's a great place to go. You should see. There's a whole lot more to see. You can tour the whole state. On to number two. John Adams was president number two. He was born in Braintree, Massachusetts, and he was buried in Quincy, Massachusetts at the United First Parish Church with his wife, Abigail. He was one of ten presidents to serve only a single term, um, but he did have the distinction of having his son, John Quincy Adams, became the sixth president, and he did live to see that. Uh, he was the only non-Virginian of the first five presidents, and when he was a young man, he wrote political essays and had them published in the Boston newspapers under the name of Humphrey Plowjogger. You should read some of them. They're actually pretty funny. And one of his major rivals, the guy he lost the presidency to, Thomas Jefferson, they both died on the same day, uh, July 4th, 1826, exactly 50 years after the new nation adopted the Declaration of Independence. And his last words, at least according to history, were, Thomas Jefferson survives. But the only witness to that was his niece, Louisa Smith. And she actually said that his last words were, Thomas Jefferson, and then something she couldn't understand. So I guess history has kind of made it, Thomas Jefferson survives. He had earlier asked if it was the fourth so he must have had the country July 4th and Thomas Jefferson on his mind when he died. John Adams, second president of the United States. Next up, number three. Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States, and he was a Renaissance guy. He spoke six languages. He wrote 19,000 letters in his lifetime. He was an inventor. Um, he's buried at... Monticello, that's his estate in Charlottesville with his wife Martha, who was Martha Wales Skelton Jefferson. It's really worth going there because you can tour the whole estate and see how he lived and, and what all went on at that time. Martha died when she was 33. She made Thomas promise that he would not get remarried, so he took up with Sally Hemings, one of his slaves, who historians believe is probably... Martha's half-sister. Sally's mother had an affair with Martha's father. Uh, Martha gave him six kids, um, most of which did not live to adulthood, but historians believe that Sally had somewhere between one and six kids with Jefferson. 
He wrote something called the Jefferson Bible, which is kind of fascinating. The first one was completed in 1804. It was called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But no copies exist, so we don't know what was in it. But the second Jefferson Bible was called The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth. And he cut and pasted the whole thing. And believe me, I mean, not like today. He did it with a razor. And he took out any mention of miracles, the resurrection, and any passages that show that Jesus was divine. Uh, completed in 1820. A controversial document, to say the least, I would say. On a lighter note, he introduced ice cream to the United States after trying it in France. And can you imagine where we would be today if we didn't have ice cream? That is a major accomplishment. Abe Lincoln, for some reason, really didn't like Jefferson. His law partner claimed that Lincoln didn't like Jefferson because of his moral uh, shortcomings. Who would have thought that? But he's going to be around for a while, at least his name is, because he's on the $2 bill. He's on the nickel. And he made the final cut for Mount Rushmore. The four faces that are on there, he's one of them. He loved wine. He spent $10,000 while he was president buying wine. And if you look at conversion to today's dollars, that is somewhere between $190,000 and $215,000 on wine in eight years. And do the math on that, somewhere around $25,000 a year. That's a drinker. When the Library of Congress was burned during the War of 1812 and lost 3,000 books, he sold his collection of 6,707 books to Congress to replenish what they had lost. The sale price was $23,950, which again, in today's dollars, translates somewhere between four hundred and fifty and six hundred thousand dollars. Now interestingly enough, our third president died in debt. He was in debt his whole life. He owed a hundred and seven thousand dollars when he died, which is roughly two to two and a half million dollars in today's dollars. His tombstone that he wrote himself leaves out one particular accomplishment that he had, and that is that he was president of the United States. Interesting. You would have thought that would have been on there. Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States and a Renaissance guy. You should really read about him and you should go to Charlottesville and visit his estate, Monticello. Next up, president number four, James Madison. He was the smallest president we've ever had, 5'4 and 100 pounds. I don't know how you could be too intimidating at that size. Um, but his wife was one of the more well-known first ladies that we've had, Dolly Madison. Both of his VPs died in office, oddly enough. George Clinton, who died in 1812, and Elbridge Gerry, who had redistributed Massachusetts districts to tip the scales in his favor. And from that process, the name gerrymandering was born. His face is on the $5,000 bill, which was discontinued in 1945, but Imagine the, the one-upmanship you would have on your fellow presidents if you were having a conversation and uh, you said, hey, I'm on the $5,000 bill. What are you on, the $2 bill? I think you'd win. He was the last surviving signer of the Declaration of Independence. And when he died, he actually died on June 28, 1836. And they asked him if he wanted stimulants to keep him alive so that he could die on July the 4th. Two previous presidents had already died on July the 4th, and he declined, so he went ahead and expired on uh, June 28th. He's buried at Montpelier, his estate in Virginia, which is a beautiful place to go to if you get the chance you should. Um, it is an incredible tour. James Madison, fourth president of the United States. On to number five. James Monroe, fifth president of the United States. He's buried in the Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia, with his wife, Elizabeth Courtright Monroe. And I'll come back to the cemetery in just a minute. But I wanted to throw a few facts your way about Mr. Monroe that you might not know. He got 68% of the vote in 1816. Uh, pretty unheard of. And here's a strange. In 1820... He ran unopposed. How about that? 
his party was a Democratic Republican. That's another thing I don't think you would see today. Democratic Republican. He bought Florida from Spain for $5 million. That would be roughly $85 million in today's dollars. Still a pretty good deal. He has 17 counties, six cities and townships named for him in the United States. But he also has a distinction that other presidents don't have. The capital of Liberia is named Monrovia. And it's the only capital outside the United States that is named for a U.S. president. Monrovia. He died on July 4th, the third of the first five presidents to die on July 4th, but he died in 1831. Adams and Jefferson died in 1826. He dressed in Revolutionary War era clothes because he felt people needed to remember the importance of that era. If you look at the picture of Washington crossing the Delaware, Monroe is the guy holding the flag. We all look at Washington and we don't notice that Monroe's in that one too. As I said, he's buried in the Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond. He's got some pretty nice company there. Um, John Tyler, the 10th president of the United States, is buried there. And some people call the Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond the Arlington of the South because there are so many Civil War Confederate generals buried there. But also, the top dog himself, Jefferson Davis, is buried in the Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia. Monroe's estate was called Highland, and it was in Charlottesville, Virginia. And that's about it for Mr. James Monroe, 5th President of the United States. And that does it for this segment of Obscurely Famous Graves. And I hope you'll visit our website. It's www.obscurelyfamous.net. A lot of Obscurely Famous Graves there that you might want to take a look at. And I will see you next time on Obscurely Famous Graves when we do Presidents 6 through 10. See you then.